Thanks for tuning in to The Fast Show. I'm D. I'm Kevin. And The Fast Show is football all the time. We talk NFL, we talk college football, and today we're talking about the Washington State Cougars recruiting class for 2017. Mm. Kevin, this was a pretty good class. Oh, wow. Good class. Uh, I think that when you look at what Mike Leach has been able to kind of put together, uh, this is, you know, Mike Leach has had this resume of building offensive firepower. Mm -hmm. Did it at Texas Tech. They brought him into Washington State for that reason. The athletic director Good did. hire. Good hire. Yeah. Um, when we look at what where, where Washington State was before the Mike Leach hire to where they're at now, you know, I like to talk about that. We look at 2015, you know, 9-4, and 6-3 and three in the Pac-12 North. Uh, they make a bowl game. They play uh, Miami, Florida. They win that bowl game, the Sun Bowl. Then in 2016, we look at this team now, 8-5. Eight, uh, eight and five. They make the Holiday Bowl. Uh, but they lose it 17 to 12 to Minnesota, mm -hmm. um, a decent Minnesota team uh, out of the Big Ten. Sure. So we see that, and we see again what they're bringing back. Mm -hmm. You know, that's always a good thing to to start at because these are these, these are players they're bringing back. They've had experience. A player like Luke Falk, mm -hmm. uh, quarterback, six foot four, 220 pounds, uh, has been able to be in Mike Leach's system over the course of uh, three years now, and now to be a senior. Um, this is a guy that amassed 4,468 yards, 38 touchdowns, 145 uh, passer rating when we see that. Uh, and then excellent looked, quarterback. Excellent quarterback. Yeah. Uh, you saw what he was able to do. at, and, and I like to, sometimes we always try to pick a team that is kind of a benchmark. Uh, I see that with Oregon in a sense, what they were able to do uh, where, you know, you know, playing well against Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it came down to the offense of what Mike Leach had and. And Luke Falk being able to deliver that ball all over the field, you know, yeah. breaking records when you're talking about completions and amount of passing uh, completions and, and all that in yards. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they have two senior running backs coming at, coming back and Gerard Wicks and Jamal Morrow. Uh, so that's kind of a one-two punch that Mike Lee sure. could have, you know. Uh, and then, you know, seeing that, but I do have to say losing Gabe Marks is, is, does hurt. Wide receiver mm -hmm. um, that really Luke Falk was used to. Sure. Uh, running the fade route in the end zone, perhaps a corner route. Uh, just he was able to be a very pro uh, producing. He produced a lot sure. on the field as a player. So again, yeah. losing that kind of hurts. That's, that's a big a big loss for them, right? Um, for sure. And hopefully, some of these recruits will be able to kind of fill those shoes. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. recruiting, we have one here coming in. I, I like to because we both have this guy on the list, uh, and Jameer Calvin, four-star mm -hmm. athlete, um, who basically, which is interesting. At the Army Bowl. Yeah, he committed to uh, a team, decommitted, and, you know, he's he, you see him with the, you know, Beavers, uh, and then you see him with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Um, and then, of course, you see him actually uh, committing to the Washington State Cougars. So he mm -hmm. kind of flip-flopped there for a little bit. Yeah, big, big recruit because we were talking about when we losing losing like a player like Gabe Marks. This is a four-star wide receiver that was a big get for Mike Leach in that system. Well, it was, and, you know, we are we're talking about this with uh, in in Washington State. It's difficult to recruit to Pullman. Pullman. Yeah, it's difficult to recruit there. Not only is it uh, kind of isolated um, uh, in 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 that area of Washington, uh, but you know it's north. You know it's not some of the southern schools. So you're looking at uh, a, a difficult uh, route to take when it comes to recruiting. And landing a four-star athlete, you know, you're not gonna get a lot of these, again, we talk about this, you're not gonna get a lot of these five-star athletes. Uh, you, there's only 32 of them. And again, that's mm. five-star athletes, uh, being that there's only 32, and that's to mirror the uh, first round of the NFL draft. So you've got 32 picks in the NFL mm. draft. And so this kind of just mirrors uh, so you only have 32 five stars, and so Oregon, Washington, Washington State, you're not going to see maybe ever any five star athletes. Uh, they're going to go to Texas, they're going to go to USC, uh, they're going to go to some of these uh, more prominent schools as far as that goes. So, yeah, again, four star athletes, you're excited when you get them. Again, we don't know um, how it's going to pan out when you're in college. Uh, from high school to college, you, right. we've seen higher uh, star athletes that don't actually pan out and some lower star athletes that actually excel in the college ranks. Um, so you don't really know what you're getting. And for Washington State, the majority of your recruits are in the three-star range, you know, right there right. in the middle. It's just the top 10% of recruits in the nation. So I mean, the thing about this is, uh, for me is in regards to when you look at any kind of recruiting, 
you saw Oregon flip a couple five stars. So it can be done. Sure. But it, it but done. but it's hard. It, it, you're you're talking about California, University of Southern California, Cal Berkeley, UCLA. Um, you know, you're, you're looking at those areas in local Oklahoma, Alabama. Right. Alabama is going to have a few of those five star so athletes. So you see that it's going to be hard to recruit against uh, programs like that. Uh, but you can get that 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 flip. But what I like is is Washington State is looking to go into some of these pipelines like Texas, mm-hmm. some of these other pipelines to go after maybe these three three to four star type recruits mm-hmm. and and gain that talent coming from other areas. Sure. So let's talk a little bit about some of these recruits that are coming in uh, for, and you talked a little bit about Jameer Calvin. Now you're uh, a wide receiver. This is this is a, a wide receiver that's about five foot ten, right? Um, coming out about 150 pounds, somewhere in there, it's on the smaller, slighter side, uh, coming from Cathedral High School um, there, and he's a four-star athlete. Um, I'm sure that if I was Mike Leach, I'd be excited about this guy because, again, you're looking to replace some of the wide receiver talent that you might be losing. Um, And, again, you might not look to play him right away, um, but see what he has, and you might be able to bring him in, um, you know, some of the third down passing plays maybe, um, kind of bring him along. Uh, But he he looks like he's going to be a really good, solid recruit for Washington State. I mean, you you lost a player like Gabe Marks who was about six foot foot one. Mm -hmm. So you're just replenishing with with Jameer uh, Calvin, in a sense, to maybe have that role. When I think of five foot nine, I think of six foot, I think of quickness. I think Mm -hmm. quickness off the ball, getting to the ball, getting to the spots and where a quarterback can get you the ball. Um, and so again, I think it's a great pickup for what they what they're looking for. Yeah, for sure. And so uh, another thing that we want to talk about here, uh, we've got a couple of offensive tackles that are kind of interesting to us. Um, uh, we've got Abraham Lucas, who's an offensive tackle um, out of Archbishop Murphy, uh, Archbishop Murphy in Everett, Washington. Um, he is uh, six foot seven, two hundred fifty six pounds, so a little bit wow. on the slight side, but really tall. Right. Um, this is a, a kid that they're uh, really excited about. And again, uh, when you're looking at offensive tackles, um, and he might have to beef up here a little bit. Two hundred fifty six <laughs> right. pounds. He's a little bit slight for an offensive tackle. Um, but when you're seven, six foot seven, you have a frame. You, <laughs> you have a frame to yeah. eat. Right. You <laughs> put on muscle, right? Yeah. So, and another offensive tackle, uh, Robert Valencia. This is a um, junior college transfer um, out of uh, San Francisco uh, City College. There, um, six foot six, so really close to that. Mm. Two hundred ninety pounds. So you got a little bit more uh, meat on your bones there. Uh, and this is a kid that uh, was recruited by several colleges, and he actually made visits to. Texas Tech, to Cal, to Utah, to TCU, and then to Washington State where he committed. And coming, so, coming out of city of San Francisco College. Right, exactly. Interesting. So uh, interesting that he made those visits um, himself, yeah. you know, to, uh, and then finally just making his decision and sticking Washington with State. Washington State. Yeah. So um, again, a couple of really good offensive tackles. Now you've got, uh, again, a quarterback. Right. They're going to want to throw. He's, he's known to put up a lot of yards and a lot of touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, so having that extra, you know, couple of maybe a couple of backups coming in uh, or possibly a starter in there to help out protecting your quarterback. Pretty you, valuable. You need that uh, because, again, we always talk a blind side, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you need that protection. But what I like also, too, is the size that Mike Leach is going after. So it's it's almost like a way of, of, of keeping – uh, a when we talk about offensive tackles or we talk about defensive tackles, we talk about leverage. And, and really, I think a lot of these tall players, that's the hardest thing that they have is getting hip leverage and getting low enough to be able to make those blocks. Mm-hmm. But again, it's technique. And I think with when you look at what these position coaches, they have a chance to be able to build something that with that kind of height to be able to get good. Because again, they become maulers. I mean, mm-hmm. We've seen it on the NFL with with the uh, Oakland Raiders. We've seen it with the Dallas Cowboys in the offensive line. So again, these when you put that that frame of six foot seven, then you add a two hundred and eighty or two hundred and ninety, maybe even three ten or three hundred. That's that's hard to move, uh, and so they become a b- good protection for a person like Luke Falk and quarterbacks that they want to dra- uh, uh, recruit coming into their uh, Mike Leach's system to really want to throw the ball and distribute it. So another. Uh 
player that we want to kind of highlight here is a player out of Oregon, uh, Wilsonville High School. Mm. Uh, this is uh, a quarterback, pro-style quarterback, okay. Connor Neville. Now, you mentioned that uh, your current quarterback is a senior. Right. So, and they've got a couple of quarterbacks up there that are kind of waiting in the wings, but this is a quarterback six foot two, 187, so he's not real tall. Right. Uh, he's kind of like the uh, Drew Brees height, six foot two, maybe a little bit, a little bit taller than that, maybe like a uh, Dak Prescott height. It's about mm -hmm. six foot two. Um, and uh, about 187 pounds, so a little bit on the slight side. Again, but he's got a strong arm. I mean, this is a kid uh, that uh, in this, you know, in 2016, he went to the title game. They lost the title game. But during the year, threw up uh, 2,700 yards, 35 touchdowns, only 10 interceptions, hmm. uh, about a 60% completion percentage. So really good quarterback. The year before, this kid threw up 3,000 yards, 37 touchdowns, 8 INTs, and was the league offensive player of the year. Wow. So wow. this is a good get for uh, Washington State. Um, I think he's going to turn out to be a fine quarterback for them. Um, excellent uh, pickup for and them. And I, I like how, you know, and we saw this with Luke Falk, um, the, the touchdown to interception ratio. A lot of people, a lot of analysts like to go to that, that stat because, again, it's about taking care of the ball as a quarterback, making good decisions. Well, and it leads decisions. to decision-making, which is what we were yeah. – IQ on the field, exactly. you have to have that. Uh, and so you look at Luke Falk when he was, you know, his uh, – you know, his, his uh, sophomore year having about eight interceptions. Then in his junior year having about 11 interceptions. So again, this kind of falls into what Mike Leach is looking for. A strong arm, good decision making, uh, not, not that TD to INT ratio. Uh, again, a quarterback has to protect the ball and not give up the ball. Uh, because again, you're talking about, uh, you know, scoring uh, and really having those opportunities to score. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, again, a good recruiting class. We're looking at number 44 in the nation, which, um, you know, for Washington State, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're, we're excited for Washington State. We think uh, that they're going to have a good season this year again. Um, I'm, I have them in another bowl game. Right. I don't think that they can take the North, uh, Pac-12 North. I think Washington is too much. Um, and then, of course, you still have Stanford and Oregon that are uh, waiting in the wings to try to make that jump back up. Uh, but I do believe that they will have a good season. I just don't think that they're going to be able to take the, the whole thing. I think where you're going to see a lot of the wins maybe coming from, and, and, and again, it's looking at, at hindsight when you see out of the South Division is possibly where they may be able to take some of those victories. In the North Division, it's going to be a tough thing because you look at Stanford, you look at Oregon. Some of these programs have made some improvements. Of course, Stanford losing Christian McCaffrey. But again, mm -hmm. it's just that, that recruiting and David Shaw being able to, and we'll talk about Stanford recruiting at some point. But again, it's just having those players that are in the cupboard coming up and, and really showing themselves, I was like, hey, there's a reason why I was recruited. There's a reason why I'm on this team and to really show something. So I think the thing is, I kind of see them uh, you know, in the Pac-12 North, being maybe being a four or five spot, uh, possibly, possibly three. But again, it's it. You, there's a lot that has to go in your favor. Um, I, I also, as we always talk about in the Pac-12 and in college football, that defense has to be able to make stops. You can you can have this mentality of scoring all these points, but you've got to have a defense that's able to put pressure uh, and, and put you know a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And also have good defensive backs, and which really Washington State in the defensive backfield has had good players. Uh, so again, it'll be interesting to see on how they're able to do that with what recruits they have coming in, to what players they still have there to really build that momentum. Mm -hmm. So uh, this has been the Fast Show. I'm D. I'm Kevin, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time. Next time. <laughs>